Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. Very fun episode today. As you can see, we're already lightened up laughing a little bit. I'm excited today because we're talking about a country... Ah! I knocked the wine bottle. I'm so excited I almost knocked the wine bottle over. A country whose wine I really, really enjoy. And we were there actually last year, and that's Portugal. Now, Portuguese wine are... I'm really churning out some high-value... Uh, especially for the lower price that you're paying wines, and they're becoming more and more available in the United States and worldwide. A uh, couple things. The stories when we were in Portugal, I was blown away how inexpensive it was in the supermarket. It was the only place in the world where I saw full bottles of wine on the shelf for under a euro. I think 80 cents, 90 cents euro sometimes. The top shelf, most of the wines were about 5, 6 euro in the supermarket. A couple would be 10 euro, and that's it. Uh, that's not to say there are some brilliant Portuguese wines going for 50, 60, 100 US dollars. I think that's about tops. But they really, really bring a lot of quality uh, for what you're paying. The first one I'm going to get into when I got to taste today, this is from a big, big time producer. I'm, what I mean by big time, huge scale, 6 million bottles a year. The DFJ Consensus Pinot Noir Tariga Nacional from 2008. Now, Shireen's smiling, she liked this wine. This wine right here, uh, Wine Enthusiast, 91 points. Uh, 2008, now this wine right here was $9.98. And for people that don't, don't understand, Torriga Nacional is like the grape coming out of Portugal. Uh, traditionally, it was made to used to make port wines, fortified wines. Uh, they're really now starting to find that they can make brilliant table dry wines out of this. So mixing Pinot Noir and Tariga Nacional is like mixing Pinot Noir and Cabernet Sauvignon. You feel like it wouldn't work whatsoever. Now this worked really well. It smelled like a, like maybe an overripe, 100% varietal Pinot Noir, uh, a red fruit, but a little bit darker, a little more ripe red fruit on the palate. It got a little bit dirty. It had the fruitiness of the Pinot Noir. Yeah. It had some plumness of the Tariga Nacional. It had some tannins, not too much. It had some dirt. Uh, it was, it was so funny. I thought it'd be beefy because this is a 50 percent Pinot Noir, fifty percent Tariga Nacional, but it was like a medium minus body. It wasn't overly big. Nice finish. It developed over the bottle. Complete wine. I rated it three point eight on Vivino out of five. Anything else you want to add on that, Shireen? Um, no. <clears throat> I think it's very very good. Uh, it's very unique to see wines that are single varietal wines in Portugal or just two grapes because a lot of the wines are blends. Um, the next wine we're show, showing off here is from also a, a big volume producer. This is the Perascuma Vino Regional Alentejo from 2013. I think also 91 points wine enthusiast. Alentejo. No, Alentejo in Portuguese. Uh, this is a blend, let me see if I get this right here, Syrah, this is a blend of mostly 79% Syrah, a little bit of Alicante Boucher, a little bit of Aragonese, and a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, Aragonese is actually the same as Tempranillo. Now, this wine was also inexpensive, $11, I mean $11, $9.98, I mean, pretty value driven wines. Um, these wines are both the Vino Regional um, classification. In Portugal, they have the top level in their appellation of DOC. That'd be like uh, the AOC from France or DOCG from Italy. And then next they have Vino Regional, which these are. That would be like IGT in Italy or Vin de Pai in France. And then they have Vino de Mesa, I think basically table wines. Those are very cheap and expensive wines. So these are still high quality wines. They're just made with uh, not as many restrictions as DLC wines are. So let's give this a go. Um, sorry, this is from Alentejano. Sorry, not Alentejo. Alentejano is uh, an area within Alentejo. This is from the Lisbon wine region. Now, when we were in Portugal, I found these wines from Alentejano, Alentejo, that's the southern third of Portugal, to be a little bit more fruit and not really complex, more New World in style. So at the time I was there, I, I wasn't really interested in them. I was more interested in the, the Duro red wines. But we're going to go back to this and we're going to give this a shot. Let's see 
how this thing tastes. Here we go. Relax here. Now I regret we're gonna have to make another trip back to Portugal. When we were in Portugal, the only region we were really wine region we were really in and tasting was the Douro wine region. Uh, once again, like most Portuguese wines, we already get nice dark, 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 dark color. All right, let's give this a, let's give this a little smell. I real, I get a lot of dark berries, dark cherries, dark fruit, a little bit of soil. A little bit herbal. Do you smell some herbal tea notes in there as well, Sheree? A little bit herbal? Just, just herbal notes, like a bit of green notes. Some, Definitely some plum pepper. Some green well. vegetables, a little bit of pepper. I mean, it is 79% Syrah. Smells mm. pretty good. Smells like a blend of a New World, Old World wine. I mean, smells a little bit Rhone-esque mixed in with a little Australian Shiraz. It's, if you put the two, it's like right in between those two when you say Shireen. Yeah. Let me, let's give this a taste. Wow. Really bright acidity. The tannins are grippy. Uh, they're not. They're not overly obnoxious. They're just grippy. Like this wine probably could be laid down for a little while. But you know, at ten dollars, I wouldn't expect. I was, I was expecting a drink it now wine. I think this wine could benefit from a little bit of aging. But one thing that shocks me, this is a dark fruit nose. I get nothing but red fruit and uh, red fruit. Not a lot of dirt. More a fruit forward wine, and a lot of acidity. Not in a bad way. I kind of like it. Real tarty. Maybe on the back end, just a little bit of hint of wood. So the flavors are kind of, I would like them to be molded or melted together a little bit more. But I still think it's pretty good, especially for 10, 11 bucks. What do you think, Shereen? I think it's very good. Um, it has the spiciness, the herbal taste. The the dirt taste, fruity, spicy, savory, all at the same time. Yeah, as Sh Shereen's more sensitive to that. I didn't pick up, you pick up a little bit of dirt, a little bit of herb. Everything. A little bit of green. Um, for me, I think the flavors are a little bit all over the place. Yeah, although uh, they're not jointed together like I would like. But at the same time, for eleven bucks, I'm not going to complain. This is a great food wine. I think we're going to pair it tonight. We're going to have some chicken, some leftover lasagna. So it's going to go well with the tomato sauce. Pr pretty good. It tastes yeah. like a twenty-five. I'm happy to pay twenty-five dollars for it. Mm -hmm. Ten, eleven bucks. I would. I would buy six of these, a case of these, throw them in the cellar for a few yeah, years. Yeah. I think they're going to drink right. So uh, nice job from uh, Alenteja Alentejano. Really nice job. Nice episode. Again, Portugal, I think, brings a lot, a lot, a lot to the table when it comes to red wines. They are producing some unique whites, too, but I think reds is where they really shine. Uh, pretty good. I think I'm hoping we can get back out there soon and film a whole video series on it. Nice stuff. Anything you want to add to that? Good show. No? No, it's okay. <laughs> if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. Check out these wines on my Vivino account. It's in the description box below, and I'll see you at the next episode.